What is the digital economy? What does digital mean? Strategic innovation. Artificial intelligence. How far can the digital economy go? Hi everyone, my name is Marek Kowalkiewicz, uh, Professor and Chair in Digital Economy at QUT. And uh, today my uh, guest here is Professor Kevin D'Souza. Uh, Kevin is a professor at uh, School of Management, uh, uh, QUT Business School. Kevin, good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Uh, Kevin, we're going to talk about uh, hype versus reality, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, future of jobs. Uh, it's an, an interesting and a very, uh, very busy space these days. There's a lot of experts talking about it. And it seems like we have two camps in this world of automation, AI and the future of jobs. One camp says that jobs are going to be destroyed and you know people will become jobless the other camp says there will be more jobs the world is going to be beautiful uh which camp are you in <laughs> so uh as as with any complex issue the answer is is always uh right in the middle and so just as an example ai is going to destroy a whole group of jobs. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these jobs are jobs we do not want to do. And so these are the automated jobs that require us, us to do a lot of boring work. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, AI, AI is going to open up new jobs that are going to be focused more on, on our creative abilities. Mm -hmm. But the real, real challenge is that the number of new jobs created is going to be less than the jobs that are going to be destroyed. All right, so um, job displacement is one thing that is happening here. And obviously, sort of when we think about the society, and I'm just going to ignore the comment about the number of jobs for a second. Uh, uh, when we talk about the entire society, it sort of looks okay. It's only when you look at individuals, you will see those people who will lose a job and they won't be able to, to do any work because they don't have the right skills, right? But what you're adding on top of it is uh, the fact that there's fewer jobs that we, you know, overall that, than, than, uh, than what we would like to have. So I know you're going to India very soon and, and, and you have some stats that you're going to share uh, there when you're, when you're in India. So, so tell us what's happening in India. So if you look at the Indian economy, so it has been growing at a tremendous rate over the last few years. And so examining the role of AI in the Indian economy is a pretty interesting exercise because it gives you evidence on how it may play out in other nations. Mm. So in India, if you think about it, about eight and a half million people are, are unemployed. Now, 18 and a half. Uh, eight 18. And a, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a large and and all of this eight and a half unemployment that I'm that I'm referring to are individuals who have a higher education degree. And so this 8.5 million people who have a high education degree cannot find jobs. And they are actually three times of the total unemployment in India. And so what you end up seeing is rather than individuals who are low skilled, mm. who, who cannot find jobs in an economy like, like, like India that has gone through a radical knowledge transformation, it is actually individuals who are earning degrees mm. that cannot find jobs. And the, and the reason here is the number of new jobs being created in the knowledge economy are fewer. So, wow. So they might have the right skills. Right. It's just there's there's not enough demand, right? So there's a, an oversupply of those of those skills, yeah. effectively. Um, so when we look at uh, Queensland uh, here in Australia, the unemployment rate for people aged between 15 and 24 years old. So you know, right from the moment when they can decide on working, that's the 15 years old, until uh, 24 years old, that uh, unemployment in, in the labor force is. 
13.3%. I understand it's quite similar to what's there in India, where the number is, I believe, 16%. Is that right? So it's a relatively similar situation, right? Uh, and, and so the India example could be, uh, could be also uh, applying to Australia. I also know from the statistics that we, uh, that we quickly looked up before, before the recording that one third of all unemployed people in Australia, one third of all unemployed people in Australia, are within that age bracket of 15 to 24. I understand that 25 is a magic number. Um, yeah. Why is it magic? And so if you look at the future of uh, knowledge work and creative work, if individuals cannot secure, secure employment before the age of 25, their chances of actually being gainfully employed through, through their productive productive career is pretty low wow. and so and so different reports have different estimates of how low that is and it is not so important the exact number however on a rough estimate if you are a kid that does not get gainful employment by 25 your prospects of being a productive member of the future workforce is somewhere in the neighborhood of 20%. So this is absolutely shocking. One third of all unemployed in Australia are in this risk group. If they don't get out of this um, you know, unemployment uh, situation before they sort of cross the age of 25, that they're basically becoming a burden on the economy and you know this is something that everyone including them, themselves wants to avoid right yeah. that's uh, that's not a, a good situation to uh, to be in we're sort of getting a bit gloomy here um, uh, which you know I'm sure we can also have some 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 optimistic uh, views on things as well but let's let's keep being gloomy just <laughs> just for a second here uh, so something that um, um, we recently learned through a conversation with a large professional services firm is that um, the way they see uh, automation is, uh, and exactly how you described it, is um, uh, it helps them in the areas that are uh, a bit more boring, a bit more repetitive, um, uh, pr probably requiring a bit less skills. Uh, but it also sounds uh, uh, very much like the jobs that young uh, people have when they enter uh, those professional services firms. So what is happening there is those people do not get a chance to perform those tasks. And as part of the you know, performing of those tasks, they do not get a chance to learn on the job and become more skilled. Right. Um, similar situation in India. Yeah, and uh, and India and and also globally. So mm -hmm. if you look at a lot of the professional service firms, one of the things that is now happening is all of the entry level jobs that were quite critical for individuals to learn the context of professional services, learn how to be a management consultant, learn how to go to a client. All of these entry level jobs yeah. are are fewer number one and and number two are being automated because how you go after leads so on and so forth and so now there is an increasing amount of pressure on on academic institutions to actually build these skills as part of programs so that individuals can enter at a higher higher level that's interesting. So the, the role of universities is effectively changing. Uh, you, you joined us um, um, at QT from US, and uh, it's obviously a highly, almost, well, it is a political issue at the moment in the US with, uh, uh, you know, truck drivers being one of the, you know, among the most uh, um, common jobs in the US. And this is also one of those that is at one of the highest risks of being automated uh, or, or, or basically displaced, which is, which is very, uh, very concerning. Uh, so what do we do when AI does everything? Yeah. So, a so AI is going to do everything, but it really depends on how you define everything, right? And so right. in quite a few industries, AI is going to completely revolutionize and do everything. Mm -hmm. So these are industries that are highly transactional in, in uh, nature, where the sheer demand of information and data and uh, analytics is going to drive the future of services. Mm. Now, 
where AI is is going to play quite interesting roles is in the area of augmentation of services. Mm. And so this is a new area where there are job growth opportunities. So not too long ago, we had an AI tool that actually beat the world's premier poker players. Poker players. Yes. And so if you think of, of uh, bluffing, uh-huh. that's an aspect of everything of strategy. So how you negotiate a contract. You are trying to secure the best deal on your behalf. How you how you uh, hire somebody, how you reward somebody. You, this is where there is a lot that's been happening right now on how AI, AI can help companies design strategies wow. and and augment the nature of strategic decision making. But then, if you go into the creative space, and this is where we already have AI tools that can create artwork and can create music, so on and so forth. What is, what is really becoming quite interesting is how is how are we going to think about our creative place mm. going into the future? Like, are we going to be dependent on uh, technology-driven entertainment mm. or are we going to go and appreciate everything that's non-technology? Uh, mm. So in quite a few high-end resorts now, in the service industry, they are actually preventing individuals from taking their mobile phones or their iPads mm. as they go to a swimming pool. And, yeah. and the reason being is they want individuals to enjoy being on holiday. That's and, right. And individuals are paying a premium for that yep. rather than free Wi-Fi. Right? Wow. And so there's a changing nature in terms of how automation is going to change jobs and our services. I, I can relate. I have a, a map of uh, camping sites in, in Queensland where there is no phone reception, no electricity, and I try to go to them. I recognize that I might be not very good myself at uh, keeping myself away from technology, so we just go to places where uh, you know you, you get this detox. Uh, so we would be carving out those spaces, right, the technology-free spaces, which is an interesting one, right? So the services economy is growing, and... Um, uh, even if there are, you know, we, we're obviously talking about uh, also the sort of the the, the lack of uh, or the uneven growth of wages that's uh, uh, that's resulting from automation, and we've uh, we've done some uh, we've recorded some podcasts about it as well. In this world where some people are becoming increasingly uh, or reach increasingly quicker, uh, quicker and quicker, and then some other people's do not, uh, you know, those people that are richer and richer uh, will also be spending money on services in, in that in that service industry. So, so hopefully that's you know that's that's one of uh, possibly good uh, good news. Uh, Kevin, um, when you were uh, explaining the situation right now, you used a, a term augmentation, and that's that's used in parallel with automation. Can you right. explain what's the difference there? So, automation is when a uh, when a tool or a, or an or an algorithm does everything, so mm. it can make a decision or actually execute an action without any human intervention, and actually having a tool do it is much more superior mm. when it comes to performance. Augmentation is required for all of the high-end knowledge work that we do. So, so as a as a physician tries to make a decision on on a particular uh, uh, cure, mm. they need to be able to process information that no human can mm. because of the rate at which medical discoveries are happening. Yeah. And so now you have a- AI tools that can personalize the knowledge based on the, the exact case that they are uh, dealing with, their experience, and the current discovery. So mm. augmentation is about using AI to enhance your decision making. Got it. And so. Got it. So I think it was Steve Jobs uh, uh, who said uh, uh, a while back uh, that um, uh, a computer is like a bicycle for your mind. Uh, so, so in this space, the augmentation and in the world of AI, uh, this is uh, more like a uh, like a jet plane for your mind, right? Yeah. So. Mm. 
so we talked about uh, what uh, what do we do when AI does everything, and uh, and it was a good point that you made. You know, let's define what everything is. Um, uh, we talked about augmentation versus automation. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, to finish on a bit of a positive note uh, there as well. And again, you know, we're we're talking about those two camps of you know jobs being destroyed, jobs being uh, created. You say that the the truth is uh, you know somewhere in in, in between, which I, I tend to agree with. Uh, um, so what are those jobs that are going to be created, right? Surely there will be new jobs, right? Um, uh, in the Before the recording, we talked about uh, esports, that, 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 that new space, right? Yeah, I mean, just a few years back, it would be unimaginable to actually think about the world of esports. And so in the world of esports, now you have humans that are basically leveraging a AI gaming uh, algorithmic tools to create an experience that was not even imaginable a few years back. Yeah. So the whole world of esports is a good example of new jobs, new roles, new ways of earning income that can come about when you take human creativity and combine it with the advances in AI. And recent analysis uh, show that esports is a is a one billion dollar one billion dollar global industry uh, that was simply not there uh, before, uh, which is which is pretty exciting. It's it's just you know. Uh, whoever jumps on that bandwagon sooner has a has a higher chances of succeeding. Um, you also mentioned uh, new jobs in service industry. Uh, anything else that you think uh, might be might be popping up or coming up? I think in the near term, especially if you look at the next ten to twelve years, there is going to be a, a role for individuals that that have the ability to integrate data across domains. Mm. And so right now, a lot of our AI um, experiments, our AI applications are very domain specific. Mm. So we have them in health, we have them in the financial sector, so on yeah. and so forth. However, the true potential that will get realized through AI driven transformation is actually connecting those dots. And so a lot of new jobs are going to be cre created that have a specific focus on individuals that can leverage data across domains. So, mm. so uh, that's an interesting area where we see a lot of uh, new job descriptions come about. Got it. Like AI orchestrators, those exactly. that bring bring that things bring together. together. Oh, that's very interesting, and that that reminded uh, me, and that, that that that's my thought about a job of the future. I might have mentioned that in the past as well, but um, sometimes when I look at my household and see all the you know all the technologies there, um, it takes it could take hours, days, months to make sure that everything works very well with with one another. Um, so in, in in Australia, we have that. Um, um, term a tradie for tradespeople who uh, just do all sorts of, uh, you know, building homes, uh, helping with, with uh, everything that's, that's happening around. Um, and, and an equivalent term could be a cody, like a tradie for, for technology. Uh, perhaps that's an, it's not an AI orchestrator the way you described it, which is a, a, a very sophisticated, probably well-paid job as well. Cody is probably more like a, like a vocation, right? Uh, um, but when you think about, uh, um, car uh, servicing 20, 30 years ago was very different from, you know, fixing our cars these days, right? Uh, those people have to now, you know, yeah, it's all about plugging into the computers and, and reading the data. So I think that that will be an, an exciting space to see as well. So we talked about um, hype versus reality. There is a bit uh, a, a bit of hype there as well, but hopefully you know, our talk here was, was more about reality and, and what might be coming. We'll truly, we'll, we'll see what's coming but it's it's always interesting to you know to to explore those uh, potential scenarios uh, kevin i would like to thank you very much thank for, for joining us today thank you thank you that's it for this week on the podcast be sure to follow us on twitter at chair digiconomy and visit our website at chair digital economy.com.au see you next time the digital week is brought to you by the chair in digital economy the CDE would like to thank its partners, PwC, QUT, Brisbane Marketing and the Queensland Government.
the chair in digital economy, navigating the future.